Good afternoon, folks. This is Jacob Bolger, or the sculptor, and today we're going to make a little uh, meditating frog, yogi frog kind of thing. And we're working with Marblex, uh, Marblex uh, self hardening air dry clay. I really like this clay. I've worked with it for 30 years, and um, I've worked with other clays as well, and I find that this clay is really a uh, very good product and uh, it dries uh, very du durable and uh, very hard and uh, yeah I really like it a lot so um, right now I'm just forming a base for um, the piece I kind of, I'm thinking uh, I might like to make it like a a little uh, candle holder like uh, place or candle sit like that a, uh, a tea light battery powered tea light mm -hmm. so I want to make sure that my base is big enough for that <clears throat> I like frogs I, I love sculpting frogs and I have made so many frogs over the years and uh, actually uh, somebody, uh, I don't have a name handy, I'll, I'll uh, put it up later when I'm doing the editing of the video. Uh, she saw my kissing frog uh, tutorial and she made these cute little frogs that look like they're meditating and <clears throat> I don't recall ever doing a meditating frog video on my channel. So I was kind of, I thought that was interesting that she came up with an idea on her own, really. Um, and that's what they look like. They're, you know, like the cross and that sort of thing. She sent me pictures to my Facebook page. And, uh, yeah. So, um, they were cute and they kind of inspired me. I thought, oh, I'd love to, I'd love to do it. I really liked uh, doing uh, the little meditating frogs. Um, and animals. I do like cats and dogs and lions and elephants and <laughs> I've done all kinds and I really like it. I really enjoy it. It's just fun. So that gives us a little um, base to work on. It's good to have a little flat surface to work on. I use this yogurt uh, lid a lot. So it gives us that and the candle will go right here and the frog will go back here. So I'm going to start the frog. Now I am going to uh, uh, do uh, the video at high speed on occasion because uh, otherwise the video would just be you know very long and uh, so, but I, I, I will uh, t tell you what I'm doing, and, you know, uh, it will be um, narrated for the most part, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you should be able to get plenty of information from this and be able to do uh, a scope on your own. Um, so, I'm going to start with a ball, like this, roll between the palms of my hands, and now I'm going to start the face.
Okay, I'm gonna make a little mushroom for him before I have to sit on. So I'm rolling kind of the stock here. And then I'm gonna take my fingers like this and pinch to kind of flatten the bottom and flare it out at the bottom. <laughs> And then I'm going to flatten it at the top. And I'm going, uh, when I join two pieces of clay, you, I take a wet tool, like a sharp tool like this, and I score the two parts to be joined so they uh, are, you know, really solid when they join. So I'll do that, and then I'll put it on the base here. And uh, keeping in mind that mushrooms are kind of sinuous and I'm going to kind of put it in a mushroom-like pose, so to speak. Kind of like that. And then uh, I'll make the mushroom top. And the way I do that is I roll a ball, which is hard to do on screen. I roll a ball. And then I pinch like this while turning it. Forming it into a mushroom cap. And I want to kind of make it fairly thin on the edges. Mm -hmm. I kind of want it to look like that. I'll probably flatten this a little bit, the lump in the middle of the, the hump, because uh, the frog should be sitting on it. Okay, so like that. And then, again, the scoring is very important to doing the piece of clay. So you wet the tool, score the mushroom stock, uh, wet it again, score the uh, mushroom top, and then put it on like that with a twisting motion, pushing gently down. Like that. Now, the frog. Um, I did take a brush and uh, kind of, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, I take the brush and, and just smooth a little bit, smooth the space face a little bit. Uh, be careful around the eyes because that will they, they'll get messed up real fast. So the frog will go up here like this.
then I'll start working on him again. Right now, I'm, I'm pretty much um, just finishing, and, and what I did was I made a little uh, place for the candle. I, um, I just pressed the candle into the base to make a mark of where you know where it would sit, and then I took a, a paintbrush and uh, got some water on it, and I just kind of smooth out a little place for the candle. I'll keep in mind that the, the uh, clay will shrink so you want to you don't want to make it the exact size but just a little bowl out area which is just you know nice and kind of aesthetically pleasing and then then smoothing uh, and uh, if you if your piece is really rough uh, you can use a coarser bristle brush, like this is a fairly coarse brush, brush, and, uh, and more water, you know, so, uh, you want to clean the clay off, um, but, um, you get your brush more wet and, uh, you know, sm smooth it, uh, and, uh, and then when you get it fairly smooth, you can take a smaller, uh, well, not smaller necessarily, but a softer bristle brush like this one, and uh, and then go in and uh, you know smooth it out, and uh, the softer bristle brush will leave less brush marks on it. Um, so smoothing also is important because it. 
if you have any holes or um, places where the mushroom joined the sock or underneath the arms or, you know, spaces like that. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like glue. The water is like glue, so it's, uh, it's good for, uh, kind of strengthening your piece. So, uh, so I, and if you have any holes like that, um, like down in there, you can take little bits of clay, little small bits of clay, and just put them in there, and then just kind of blend them in, which will make, strengthen the piece and make it, you know, last longer. You want it to last a long time. There's no sense in making something and not have it last for a long time. So, uh, so you fill up, fill up all those holes, and spots, and that sort of thing, and. Uh, and then get it nice and smooth. The other thing you can do is once you get it, uh, you, you've done your blending and you're filling the little holes and all that sort of thing, you can add texture to the piece. And that's what I'm going to do. I think it'll be nice with a, a nice, gentle, soft texture. Because I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is a bronze finish on this piece. I think it'll be really pretty. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a ball tool you got to make sure it's really clean, though. I mean, it's, this, this is all gunked up. Mm. All this clay on it. And then uh, you can just uh, do little swirls with the uh, tool and just put in a really nice little soft texture. And every couple of seconds, you take the clay off the ball. The ball, you just, uh, you know, just pull it off. So it doesn't build up on the tool. And I think uh, that nice texture will show up, with, you know, really pretty with the bronze. And then on the stock, I'll just, uh, you know, basically cause in little, just a little lines of texture. And I'll, uh, I'll do the mushroom top too. I'm just going around like this. And I'll even do the fog. I'll just uh, do gentle, light uh, texture on them. And you'll see when, when we do the bronze finish, it'll, it'll be quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, just do that lightly and get your piece ready and then we'll come back. I'm still doing some smoothing and texturing. I decided to make the frog uh, smooth for the most part but do texture on the mushroom and the base. But I, I want to move uh, move it, uh, move the frog uh, because the base is a little thin and I want to uh, build it up a little bit. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, take a clay cutting tool, it's a wire, it's a very thin, uh, very strong wire, and I'm going to hold it to the base, to the uh, yogurt top, and just uh, draw it along towards me to cut it away from the base, from the uh, yogurt top, like that. And then uh, move it to this other board here. <clears throat> that way I can get at it better and uh, maybe add some clay to the top a little bit to thicken it up a little bit. I, I don't, I just, I think it's a little thin. <clears throat> so I want to show you that because I don't know what you're working on, but if you need to release it, uh, that's how you can do it. And, and you can use another type of thin wire 
or even a string for that matter, uh, probably uh, to uh, cut it away if you had to. <laughs> okay, so I'm finishing up now. I'm pretty much done. And uh, with the Marblex, it's okay if you want to put it in the oven for like a half hour. I wouldn't do it for a long time. You know, a half hour for uh, on a warm setting and just it drives the surface of the clay so I can put a finish on it. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and start a finish. Okay, we're back and uh, the frog is dry enough to uh, do a finish on. And the first part of that finish is going to be to prime it with Golden's GAC 100. And there'll be uh, a tool and supply list with everything that we're using on this project. And the sculpt and the finish and everything. And links to places where you can get the items. So, uh, I got that in a lid here, and I'm just going to paint it on. I just have to do one coat, and uh, so I'll do that, and I'll come back in a few minutes. I decided to experiment with another finish instead of bronze today, something a little bit different. I'm going to be using uh, Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic uh, Burnt Umber will be the color. It helps if your brush is a little bit wet, and I'm going to paint that on. And I want to work it into all the detail. That's uh, kind of an earth tone. I, I haven't uh, ever done this finish before, but you know, I'm always experimenting, trying to find things and uh, somebody commented and said that it might be nice if I did some earth tones so uh, um, I decided to give it a shot okay next I'm going to take uh, the same uh, Utrecht Studio series acrylic <clears throat> in buff white here and I'm going to mix in some of the burnt umber and I mean this again I have not done this before but I'm thinking this might be nice so maybe more burnt umber I'm just mixing it kind of coming up with a nice uh, light brown like that and then uh, get my brush a little bit wet and uh, Mix up a little bit of that in the in there. Oh, got my brush. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm gonna wipe my brush off, and uh, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this and dab it off on a paper towel, and I'm just gonna lightly go over it. What is called dry brushing. Kind of leaving the uh, you know the uh, burnt umber base coat um, showing. So I'll pick up a little bit more paint on my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and just continue. I don't want much paint on my brush now. I'm gonna uh, have it just go on subdued. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Dab it my brush. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a nice earthy, woodsy kind of finish. I like it. So, uh, <clears throat> let me think about that and I'll come back. So, after coming up with that, you know, doing that light brown uh, br uh, dry brushing, 
I went a shade lighter and mixed uh, a little buff uh, with a little brown, but I made kind of a, a lighter uh, drag brush uh, color. Um, you know, applying it the same way, dry brushing it on like this. And I kind of like this. I, I like this a lot better. It's a, it's a little bit lighter. But it still has the, uh, you know, the other work that we did. So, I mean, every time you do a layer, of course, you know, you're leaving some of the other. And, you know, this is a really pretty earth tone. Quite nice, I think. So, um... It was really a good experiment. Experiment. I'll probably be doing more of this type of finish on my sculptures in the future. So uh, worked out pretty good. But I'm just taking a little bit of this buff. I just mixed it uh, a lighter color right here. You see, and uh, I'm just dry brushing that on now. And I do like it. I do like it a lot. It's very really nice and earthy and quite nice. Get under the mushroom there. Hit the bottom. Yeah, I like that. I know some of you are probably surprised, huh? <laughs> yeah, that turned out really nice. I like that. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, well, that basically concludes the tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it uh, and got a lot out of it. And if you do decide to make a uh, frog sculpture like this or um, something of your own uh, inspired by this tutorial, that would be great. Uh, if you do, please send me a photo. My email address is in the About section on my channel page at Jake Folger. You also can message me on my Art Facebook page. Uh, the link is in the video description, along with a complete tool and supply list, resources for everywhere, every place you can buy, all the stuff you need for this project. And, yeah, so... Um, uh, please give the video a like, share it with your friends and family, and uh, uh, subscribe to my channel and for more great content like this, and hit the bell icon so you get a notification when I upload. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and have a great night. Bye-bye.